Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my Python for Finance video tutorial series. In the last part of the video, I showed you how to perform regression analysis on individual securities to see if they are showing a likelihood to increase in value and to make stock market price predictions. And of course, because you guys are smart, you said, well, that's all well and good, but wouldn't it be better if we could do this with updated stock market data? And on top of that, could you automate the entire process of searching for those securities out of the entire US market that have the largest likelihood of increasing in value in the short term? And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so this is what we're making. Here's all of our previous stuff that I've covered in past videos, which you should understand. If not, go and watch them. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna download all 100% updated data. And then I'm gonna go through, show you how to update those stocks, calculate daily returns, update your daily returns. And then we're gonna perform regression analysis on the entire stock market and everything is going to be 100% updated. Then we're gonna cycle through all of that data, performing regression analysis on all of those securities. And then after we do that, we're gonna get a list of stocks. And look at this, CEI, this is old data, sorry. If you were here whenever I was recording this, you could have got a nice return because CEI at the time of this recording, which was my algorithm's number one prediction for the stock that had the most momentum out of the entire Wilshire 5000, well, that stock went up 38% in three days. Now, of course, not guaranteed. And before you make any investments, of course, you should perform a lot of technical analysis. But hey, this is what is used in the market to find those stocks with the most momentum. And I'm gonna show you how to do it all in this video. All right, so this video is all about searching the entire stock market or the US market or the Wilshire 5000 anyway for stock opportunities, buying opportunities and stocks that could potentially pop in, in value. Now, of course, this is not investment advice. What I'm doing is teaching you a set of skills that once you understand them all, will make you a dramatically better investor. But you have to completely understand everything I'm teaching here. All right, so what are we gonna need to do? We're gonna need to update our stocks and then perform uh, calculations across all of our new updated data. We're using the same exact libraries we've used in the previous videos. We are going to be using the same different date data as well as where we're going to store our stocks. So if you're on Windows, you're probably gonna have something similar to this. If you're on Mac, you're gonna have something similar to this. Everything works on Mac and PC. Actually, I do everything on Windows ahead of time and that's my main thing, but I have better video editing software on Mac, that's why I use it. Okay, now while we are going and getting our updated stock data, we are going to dump the stocks that we don't download. There's some sort of bug that uh, in communicating with Yahoo that we get. The stock that's not downloaded is gonna go into this array. And then after we go and populate this with all of our different stocks that we didn't properly download, we're gonna put them in missing stocks and then we're going to go and try to download them again. Now all of these files and all of the stocks that you're gonna have at the end of this video are gonna also be in the description. So if you wanna get a hold of those. In previous videos, and I'm gonna be actually writing code here. This isn't gonna be me just pointing at stuff. All right, so we're also gonna to have to get all of our stock tickers, which are saved into file folders, and we're going to search through those. There are approximately 2,886 total stocks. Actually, there's exactly 2,886 stocks that we will be analyzing. We're going to save stock data to a CSV file. And the only thing that changed from the last time we did this is we're going to be storing this new stock data that we download into a folder called update. And then we are going to take the updated data and we're going to combine it with the stock data that we already have, which is numerous years of stock data, again, from previous videos. So now I'm gonna actually start writing some code. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use this save to CSV from Yahoo, and I am going to update, I'm going to download just the new data that I do not have. So how I'm gonna do that is I am going to say for 
x in range and I'm going to download everything in blocks. So I'm going to go and get like the first 500 new updated pieces of data, which is what we're downloading is price changes on these stocks. Then I'm going to be calling save to CSV from Yahoo. So let's just copy this, paste it down inside of here. And I am going to go and call tickers, which has all of my different stock ticker symbols inside of them. And I'm going to start downloading data uh, from uh, August the 20th up to September the 10th. And then at the end of this video, you're going to see how my predictions actually work based off of what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm going to go from there to here. So this is now going to be updated stock data as of like right now. So what I'd like to do is, whoops, take that colon out of there. Sorry about that. Okay, so after we go and we cycle through and get all those different stocks that we have, now again, those stocks that we do not properly download, we are going to be putting them inside of stocks not downloaded, append. So if we have an exception, meaning we weren't able to download the stock, they're going to go into this guy, stocks not downloaded up here. All right. And then after we go and get all this stuff done, we are going to say print and let's just say something like finished, just so that we know that we downloaded all of our stocks. Now, as we do this, this array up here is going to get bigger and bigger. We're going to have more and more stocks that weren't properly downloaded each time we run this. And the next time we run it, this is going to change to 501, whoops, up to 1000. All right. And you're going to keep on doing this until you get to this magical number of 2,886. So you're going to download all of those different securities. Now, after you do that, you're going to end up with a list of stocks, stocks not downloaded, that weren't downloaded. What you're going to do is you're going to paste those into this array right here, or this list called missing stocks. And then you're basically going to do the same exact thing, except you're going to do it just on your missing stocks. So we're going to say 4x in, and we change this to missing stocks, missing stocks. And those are all of the symbols that we weren't able to get a hold of. And we're going to change this to just X now in this situation because we're pulling those just from the list. And the dates are going to stay exactly the same. Of course, you can change your dates to later dates. And then finished is going to happen again. And then as you go through here, you're also going to want to say stocks not downloaded. So after it goes finished, it's then going to show you all the stocks that weren't downloaded. All right. But I downloaded them all and everything works great using that data. OK, so now what are we going to do? Well, this function returns a data frame from a CSV file. We already went through all this. And what this stuff here means is that we are going to say that the date for all our stock data is going to represent the index that's going to be tied to the prices and eventually the daily returns. And then we're going to catch any file not found errors and you know handle those. And then it's going to return a new data frame. Well, now what we need to do is we need to merge our new data we just downloaded from Yahoo, our updated data, with our old data. So we're going to go and I'm going to create a function. And it's going to be called update stock data. And it is going to receive a ticker that it's going to need to update. And I'm going to go up and folder is equal to. And then here is where you would put wherever you want to store the updated data that you're going to be downloading. So the update folder is going to be, in my situation, this folder right here. And that's on Mac. And of course, if it's on Windows, just put in a Windows directory. All right. Then my stock folder. I'm going to label this as stock folder just so it's easier to understand what's going on because whenever you use path all the time, things can change. So what's path? All right, so path is this. This is the location for my stocks or if you're on Windows, something like that. Okay, so we're going to come back down inside of here and we're just going to leave that as path. But I want to call it stock folder so that I know because we have multiple different folders here. Well, then I am going to get a 
update data frame. And this is going to call get df from CSV. And it is going to pass in the location for my upload folder. And it is also going to pass in the ticker that I want to grab information for. Then I want to go and get my original data frame that is saved. So I'm going to go get df from CSV. And I think you can see as we progress through this, and I'm going to get this from my stock folder using the ticker that was supplied, of course. And this is original df. So that's the data frame with my old price data. And then I have the also the updated price data. What I want to do at this time is drop. There's uh, unnamed columns that come inside that just corrupt our data. I want to go and get rid of those. So to do that, I'm going to say original df and drop original df and columns and I'll go original underscore df dot columns string contains and I'm going to be able to get rid of anything that has unnamed inside of it if I put this inside of quotes that is. So if it says unnamed, it's going to get rid of that column because it's a garbage column that we do not want. And I'm going to mark this as case false like this. And then let's go down to the new line. We're going to say access and we're going to delete the whole entire column. And then in place makes everything basically save for our new data frame. So gone column and we continue. Well, then I also want to delete my daily return data. So I'm going to go original df is equal to the original df. And I'm going to say drop. And it is called daily return. This is my old stock data that I want to clean up and you know update. And then one. OK, so that's going to drop that as well. Then I'm going to create a new data frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the old data with the new data. And to do so, you go PD pandas and concat. And then inside of these brackets, we will say original data frame and update data frame. And they'll put them right in order based off of the new dates, you know, the dates, that's the index. Then after it does all that, I'm going to I'm just going to say return the new data frame that has the old data, which is still valuable, along with the new updated price data. OK, then we come to this function, which we've created in the past called save data frame to CSV file. Very, very useful. And we got that set. Now I'm going to create another function and it's going to be called and it's going to cycle through all the tickers and it is going to perform these updates that we have in this function right here, except it's going to do it on every single stock in our file folder. So I'm going to call this update stocks and stock folder is what it's going to be passed. And then I just say for X in tickers like that. And I am going to put this inside of a try block because anytime there's a potential error like corrupted data or something like that, I want to be able to handle it. So I'm going to say working on because I want to know if there is corrupted data, what file by chance it is. Maybe it's a it's something that's just corrupted and we don't even care about it. Or maybe it's a security that we want to go and try to fix the data for well that's going to tell me exactly what's going on with it. So then I just go update stock data, which again is this, this function right here, update stock data. And what I need to do to get that those updated files is I need to pass in my new ticker. And then I say save data frame to CSV because we have brand new awesome data and it's very useful. And so I'll say stock folder. Now all of our data is very easily fit, updated and everything just by basically changing the dates that we are going to be um, updating for. 
So, you know, that's that's basically what we need to do is just call Yahoo with our new dates. And then we got new, you know, files and everything's great. Okay, where we have new uh, data anyway. So, got this all set up. And basically then I'm going to say accept. And I'm just gonna catch all exceptions here just by going EX like that. And then I'll print out EX so we can see whatever error you know we could potentially have here. All right, then after I do that, well, very easy. I just say update and stocks. And if I have my dates changed, boom, we are done. And we're going to be running this on every single security we have. We have almost 3,000 securities. And depending upon your speed of your computer, this could take a while. So we're going to be downloading all of that data and merging the old price data with all of the new data. And then we get down here and it finally, I went one over and couldn't find the file and it says whatever. Okay, so now we have completely updated data. At this point, again, we are going to be adding our daily return column that we previously had deleted. And I went over how all of this is gonna work here again and nothing is going to change with this. So everything is still cool with what we previously learned about in past tutorials. Now, if I wanna go and update my daily returns for all of my securities, I am going to cycle through all of my ticker symbols right like this. And then I'm gonna say try because anytime you're working with files or something, you could have problems. So I'm gonna say print and I'm gonna go working on just so we know what file or, or stock or whatever might have some problems let's print that out and then i'm going to say new data frame you shouldn't actually get an exception here but you never know df from csv and we'll pass in the path and we'll pass in the whoops the stock uh, ticker symbol to get that guy and then i'm going to say new data frame is equal to, and I'm gonna call add daily return to, whoops, data frame, and I'll pass in new data frame and the symbol here. And then I'm gonna call save data frame to CSV, and pass in new data frame to the path and X. And that is going to get all that handled, but except I, I have to handle our exception. So I'll say exception as EX like that. And then we will print any error messages that we have and handle them from that point. Okay, so just by calling this, that is going to update all of our daily returns. And that brings us to what we did in the previous video. Guess what? We are going to be doing um, calculating regressions to, just like we did previously. The only thing that's gonna change is the length because now we have more observations because we updated our data. So we are going to go and if you, you wanna run this right here to find out how many observations you have. In my situation, I have 1,712. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go and get 80% of that 1,712. That's gonna give you 1,369 approximately. You're gonna plug that in there and then you're gonna plug 1,369 inside of here. And just to review briefly, what we do is we train our model on this data, this early data, and then we are going to test that with all of the data thereafter. And if you don't know how regressions work, watch the previous part of this tutorial. I cover the rest of this. The only other thing I'm doing here is I'm projecting 60 days into the future. Previously, I did 160 just to be goofy. I'm doing 60 days in the future. You might wanna change this to 30 days in the future. Just um, you know, something to play around with. And every single thing else here is exactly like the previous video. So if you want more information on that, watch the previous video. Now what I'm gonna do is take those functions and I'm gonna create a list that is going to have the ticker as well as the return on investment for these different securities. So I'm gonna go get projected ROIs and like this. And I'm gonna have a list that is going to be called ticker. 
and I'm going to have another list which is going to be called ROI. Whoops, ROI like that. And then I'm just going to cycle through all of my tickers. So in tickers like this, I'm going to print out. Anytime you do anything, you want to print out anything that's going to take a long time to calculate. You're going to want to print out some information that updates saying, hey, I'm working on this one right now. Just so you know, the user can be like, oh, did it crash? Because sometimes this stuff can take a while. So I'm going to go and get the ROI is going to be equal to calc and projected ROI and pass in the ticker symbol. That is all that is going to be required for that guy. And then I'm going to go accept and catch any exceptions. And then this is mainly going to be triggered if there's some corrupted data somewhere in there. And then you'll know that your data is corrupted. And if you get this, you're going to say stock data corrupted. And because you print working on, you're going to know which ticker was corrupted. So that's, you know, something useful. And if there was not an exception triggered, well, then we know that we can append our new ticker uh, for our stock to our list called ticker. And then I'm also, just so you can see some information going on while you're sitting here waiting for this to calculate, I'll print out the ROI. So I'll go, there's the ROI, you know, if you want to look at that while the screen is doing stuff. And then you're going to, the important thing is you're going to append this return on investment. And what this return on investment is, once again, is the projected return on investment over 60 days. All right, so that is a guess. It's a guess. I want you to know that. All right, it's something, a starting point for future investigations into potential investments. But it is not, oh, that looks good. The data says it looks good. Let me buy it right now. No, it just tells you that it's a potential buying opportunity. All right, that's all it does. Uh, if Jim Cramer says something on CNBC, hopefully you don't just say, oh, well, Jim Cramer says buy, 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 so I'm going to buy. No, don't do that. All right, thank me later. And uh, here you go. So you got this, and you're going to go and return this data frame, and it's going to have column name ticker and return on investment with the lists of data. This is lists, and this is ROI for all of these different securities. Now that you have that, you can go and run it. So I'm going to go projected ROI DF is equal to get projected ROIs, ROIs like this. And then we will output the projected ROIs in no particular order whenever we do this. And then if we want to find, let's say, the top 20 stocks, and this is where we hit enter and it's going to perform all sorts of calculations. And it's going to give you output that looks something like this, okay? Then if you want the top 20 stocks that it believes should show a good return on investment in the short term, you're just going to go and get that data frame you just created. You're going to sort by return on investment and ascending is false because you want to see the highest first, not the lowest. And if you say you want to get the top 20, this is what you get. Now, I also said I'm going to show you how well these performed. Again, not investment advice. This is just to show you what sort of things you can expect. So let's say we have CEI. And I picked it just because of, you know, whatever. All right, so CEI, let's say 13 is actually the day, September the 13th, is the day in which my uh, analysis says this is a good buy. So let's say you start off September the 13th and you buy the stock at 136. Well, you can see that it doesn't really do anything, goes sort of sideways, and then it pops up to, let's say, 172. Okay? So good return on investment if you know when to get out of the security. But you can see right here, and that is you'll know when to get out of the security if you understand how to analyze chart patterns. So there is CEI. Let's throw in another stock to see how it works. CPSH. 
So there's that, and we'll look at five days. And if you bought it on the 13th, yes, uh, it started at $5.72. And if you sold it at $5.99, you did okay, but you can see where it goes afterwards. All right, so this isn't foolproof, but it does provide you with just some analysis that is very valuable. Here's another security. If you bought this, you could see at the early beginning of the day, you can see that it popped and then slowly declined. And then you can continue doing this with multiple different securities. And basically also understand that the entire time this was going on, that the market was falling hundreds of points every day. So, you know, that also plays into it. And that's something that chart patterns will also show you. All right. So this was a bad trading week here, but I just wanted to provide you with some information. Well, in this situation, if you bought document security uh, systems in the beginning of the day, you can see that that also went up in the short term. All right. So there you go, guys. That is how we can go and perform covariance and time series analysis to make predictions on pretty short term stock returns. And as we continue, I'll get into chart patterns, which will provide you even more tools for analysis. And in the next video, I'm going to get you into what I actually think is the true way to invest, which is trying to maximize return while minimizing overall risk by creating entire portfolios of stocks. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.